All right, so today I'm going to be talking about what to do about bearings that have crimped on metal shields. So some bearings come with removable rubber seals and these are very easy to deal with if you want to do maintenance on your bearings or change the grease or just get them clean. Uh, it's very easy to remove the rubber seals and, and get access to the bearing. Um, and then there's also another type of metal shield that's got a retaining spring. And these are a little trickier to get off sometimes, but they're, they're basically pretty easy. Uh, what I'm talking about is these crimped on metal shields. If we zoom in here. And these, you can see these lines are on the outside where it's crimped. And these are physically, the metal's physically bent onto the outer race. And it can be quite difficult to remove. So, addressing that is what this video is going to be about. So you don't, just because you have, so sometimes you end up with whatever bearings you end up with. And just because you have bearings that have crimped on shields doesn't mean you have to do anything about it. Um, you only need to do anything about it if you want to clean them or maintain them or do anything like that to them. But there's nothing wrong to just using them as they are until they're done and then just throwing them out. So, this, yes, I'm just saying you don't, this is not mandatory or anything like that. But this is what I like to do. So first off, what I want to do is I want to actually get this shield off of one side of the bearing. It doesn't really matter which side, there's, as far as I can tell, there's no way to tell uh, what side is which. Um, and I think these all have metal ball retainers in them. So you've got nylon retainers like this, which you can you can take out like that, and that lets you service a little bit further. Um, but as far as I know, these are just uh, metal retainers which you can't remove. So it doesn't matter which side you remove, which which shield you remove anyway. So to remove the crimped on metal shields, what I like to use is a, uh, an awl. And this is an awl on a BSA knife, pocket knife. But any sharp awl will work. Um, the round kind, like an ice pick awl, um, work, well as well, work good as well. And that's what I normally use, but I couldn't find mine. So I'm average for this. The only thing is it has to be, it has to be pretty sharp in order to press in the shield. So how I do it is I stick it following along the inner race and I just press in enough so I'm bending in and crimping. Let's see. Yep, so I'm bending in the shield and creating that little gap. And I'm pressing down and I'm trying to grab that lip and bring it up so I can get underneath it and pull the shield up. And a lot, a lot of metal shields, once you get to this point, it'll just pop right off. Um, these VBX ones, or VXB, um, they seem to be a little tougher, and so what I like to do is I like to grab an axle, stick it on the axle, and that gives me a little extra, a little extra something to pull off with. There it goes. And I pop it right off. So the thing you need to be careful of when doing this is if you go down in too far, you can hit the metal retainer, or sometimes you'll have a nylon retainer, and you can damage the retainer, popping the shield off, or you can also damage it on the on the where it goes around the balls up here. So you only want to go down the very minimum amount to just get underneath the edge of the shield. And if you're getting in a spot and it's not, it's just kind of moving down and it's not giving you a place to move under and you're just having trouble getting underneath it, just go ahead and turn it and try a different spot. And there, if it's sharp, you shouldn't have too much trouble doing this. Um, so it's kind of a key thing. And also this has to be hard enough and tough enough to be able to not, uh, not get damaged by the forces of popping these off. 
These ones are pretty tough sometimes. So um, you, what you can do is you can just leave them like this, which is one side removed, and put your grease in and clean them, or clean them then put your grease in, and put them in the wheels with the shields facing on the outside, and that can work fine. Or what you can also do is when you're when you when you're throwing away your old bearings, you can keep the rubber shields because. Um, with a few exceptions, rubber shields all fit, they're kind of universally sized and they snap in and fit and that will work just as well as it would on a zealous bearing that it came from. And I've got a metal shield on one side and a rubber seal on the other and that works great. You can even, if you want, remove the metal crimped shields on both sides and use rubber shields that uh, on, on both sides. Um, if you don't have rubber shields that you've saved from old bearings, what you can do is you can buy just new rubber shields. And I'll put a link in the description, but it's like a few dollars for 12 shields. They're pretty cheap, and if, um, if you are saving them, it can be worth doing that. I wish it was a few dollars for a hundred of them, but they're not quite that cheap. Um, but yeah, extra shields are nice. Extra rubber shields are nice to have anyway because sometimes when you're when you're taking them off to clean, um, sometimes they do get bent. Sometimes they just get bent being used, and they get they get pressed in and, and you know messed up. And you can spend the time to to flatten them out. But sometimes it's just nicer just to be able to throw an old damaged shield away and to pop in one that is still good. So, I recommend keeping your old rubber shields. In fact, these ones, these red ones, these are from Bones Reds that are extremely old. Um, in fact, these don't even fit modern bearings, they're so old. Um, I don't even know why I'm keeping them once I found out they don't fit <laughs> anything else. Um, anyway, so uh, what I'm wanting to do with my bearings is I'm actually using I'm actually re-greasing them all with my grease that I like. So I had a previous video where I showed off this stuff, which is grease in a needle tube. But I've decided to move on from that uh, based on viewer suggestions and ideas that was thrown about in the other video. I've gone to dental syringes to applying my grease. And this, this, is, this is really cool. So this, this bearing is I've already cleaned and it's all ready to go. And all I need to do so this, this works really good. All I need to do is squeeze the grease in like that. Plenty of grease. I'll stick a new shield on. And I'm just gonna leave, I'm gonna leave the inside exposed because I'm gonna reuse the, sh the inner shield of this one uh, as a shield for other bearings. So there we go, that's a really, really easy way to apply the grease to the bearings, these syringes. Let's try another one. Put this grease in. All right there, okay, put the shield back on. There we go. Pretty sweet, huh? Anyway, so that is how I deal with the crimped on metal shields and how I replace them and how I deal with replacing the metal shield with something else that's more manageable. Longboard technology over and out.